Next to me, it's Refik Anadol, one of the artists of Volvo Art Session 2019. First of all, congratulations. You received the Lifetime Award okay. at the Biennale in Florence for your creative um, work. How does it feel? Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a very big honor. Um, first of all, I mean, being in here in Switzerland is amazing. Yeah. Being in Europe is incredible. And giving this award, like this week is really very exciting. And I'm, I'm really um, very honored on my behalf of my team, myself, my family. So it's a very um, meaningful very meaningful, deeply meaningful. But you're still so young. How can you, I mean, that's that's amazing to get the Lifetime Award, right? Yeah, just, I just said I could quit. That's it. Like, <laughs> retired. I mean, what they say as a jury, I think that the body of work that I've been creating last almost yes. 10 years, they found that it's enough productivity for a given life. It was a very big honor. So, but I think it's a, just a good catalyst, like a motivation to like yes. push, push the more, yeah. more, more, yeah. So we're now standing in front of one of your um, art pieces. It's called Melting Memories. Can you explain a little bit something? Yes. So this project is about like literally a very maybe childish imagination started like maybe by, I watched Blade Runner. I was eight years old <laughs> and that movie like really struck in my mind. Since then, I'm, I never quit like imagination like this about near future like yeah. but the future that we can touch the future that invented by now, not like this Ford by like 200 years. Mm -hmm. So this idea was like, like, I mean, I'm very obsessed with our memories and data is first of all my substance as a, like, as an artist. But data is very like, I mean, it's, it's an empty, it's just a mathematical bunch of numbers. And I, I believe that data is actually a memory for us because what we left behind, our decisions, our likes, our comma, whatever. So the memory was always in my mind. But what I was obsessed almost two years ago, like where do they come from? Like where do they go? I mean, these are our most precious things, right? Yes. I mean, hopefully machines will not steal from us but also like heavily think like I mean can we touch a memory like can we feel it anyway so two years ago a fantastic professor from University of California San Francisco Adam Gazzali and his team called Neuro Escape Laboratory they allow me and my team to get trained about how to use EEG sensor which is a sensor used in um, neuroscience to track down the human brain activity we were able to use this really complex machine to understand the data that we can collect from the brain and then my quest went like, can we measure the moment of remembering as a signal? And if we can, like, can we turn this into art? So that was like the whole imagination behind the project. And we, I think, did that. Wow. So thanks. So what exactly do we see here? So, so we are seeing a data dramatization yes. of the memory as an amino, as a mean of like electric signal. So basically, we get an enormous data set of memory recordings. And thanks to the Adam Gesley's team, we learned how to use this data purposefully, not just a bunch of data. And then with, with his team and the support from the, the, the neuroscientists, yeah. we wrote a custom software, look at those data patterns, and then I personally was already involved in this algorithm called the Perlin Noise Algorithm, which is already in 1986 got the Academy Award, Ken Perlin, an incredible another professor from NYU, and his code was allowing um, creators to create the mountains, sea, sky, ocean. And I thought it's very godly thinking, like what will happen if this maybe algorithm can become a substance for these memories and create this, you know, imagination. So that's what we are watching, the moment of remembering of a couple of milliseconds of data stretch in a couple of minutes and transform into a data sculpture. So you're not only an artist but also a scientist. I mean, I wish, but I'm just personally <laughs> very involved and I'm, I'm, I'm heavily inspired from art, science and technology. And I think, I mean, this, this new century with information, there's no way that I think we are in an egocentric world. It has all about collaboration, thinking together, like yeah. pushing together. So it's pretty clear that the more we connect to each other and bring knowledge together, the more we can push the, I mean, our, our, our society. So that's what I believe and I hope that's what other people can do and really yeah. find the unknown. The other art piece which I find super, super fascinating is the Infinity Room, also exposed. What was the thought behind that? So Infinity Room is another childish dream. As I said, that this movie changed my life about science fiction, our near future. So I was always thinking like, what will happen? Um, okay, first of all, it's a very funny story. So when I watched the Blade Runner, I didn't know English. And my mother like said like, the next day, by the way, I was super weird. Like he said, like, she said like, you're acting very weird, like looking like empty, you are looking the walls, the windows, very weird. <laughs> Actually, I was so inspired from the movie. You know, like when you go out of the movie, you just get inspired. Yes. The same thing. By the way, she even brought me to a psychiatrist and psychologist to say like, hey, like, it's, it's, really? it's, it's normal. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just like the triggering. That. So anyway, there's a project from that years. And I was just thinking about like, what will happen if you open a door and that door doesn't open to your 
the, 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 the room you know, the room that is different than your everyday room. So that room has no gravity, has no floor, has no ceiling, has no corner, and that room that is beyond our everyday time and space thinking. That's just imagination. You really did an amazing job because that's what happened when I stepped in. I was like, whoa. Whoa, I don't want to step in. What, what is happening? It's really, you, you get lost in this different dimension. I mean, this ideation almost like three, four decades ago, yes. the Kusama is one of the incredible artists. She has been like pushing this, this, this imagination with the frozen moments. But for me, yeah. what was much more interesting is what will happen if this room is in flux? It yeah. can melt. It can, you know, in that room, the time and space can melt. Yes. In that room, you're unbiased about like where you are. So actually, after five minutes, yeah. there's by the way seven algorithms, yes. each using a point and line, super simple geometry yeah. and it can be understood from anyone any age any background by the way the mission behind this project is try to reach as much as people possible so I'm doing this because I think it's a kind of universal explanation of the art right now in Zurich it's in Swiss perfection mode which is amazing before that it was in other 37 cities and have been in every continent except Antarctica and explored more than 2.1 million people wow. It is Congratulations. Really good. Thank you very much. I mean, really great to be here <laughs> with, with everyone to share. Um, and it's again, we, we saw little babies in the room, so and the elder people. So it's about like, like how to make art for everyone that is not any more elitist. It's for like literally can be answered for, like you know, that, that's my inner feeling that artists should go beyond its its domain, its its bias bubble. That I don't know, but I'm just pushing that world. Super interesting. Maybe final question to you because we're talking a lot about the impact of technology on humanity, on society. What do you think? Where are the boundaries? I mean, uh, it's very clear that uh, as, as humanity, we are in this new realm that is truly driven by the machine and it's kind of inner world, right? There's this big problem or a good problem called sense of displacement, right? We don't know, are we in the physical world? Are we in the virtual world? The psychology is incredibly important. On the, on the other hand, now machines can learn, machines can dream, machines can predict who we are, that's another whole world. But I feel like I'm, I'm a very optimist person. I learned that the more you stay in these negative narratives or concerns or yes. what ifs, you, I think it's, it's, it's important, it's critically important, I'm not ignoring that, but I don't think it's functional. So I think doing and just like trying and asking the question and making it happen, yeah. I find it much purposeful and impactful for humanity. So I'm in the positive side. Uh, and try to produce optimistically to ask to make the people ask more questions because in the we're in the question age, not anymore answer age, right? And try to find this new renaissance and I think maybe inspire humanity. That's a very nice and positive approach. Thank you so much, Refi Ganadol. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Great to be here. Great to be here. Thank you.